Well, this is my sailing vessel out of time. Docked here at a moor, at a, at, a, at a dock with a pier and a marina. This is the shore power. This is the non-potable water. Actually, I think it is potable water, but we don't drink it. We get purified water. Storage deals here. We got steps leading up. It's solid. This is a barbecue pit for grilling off the side of the boat. These are paddle boards. This is an outboard dinghy motor, electric. This has a um, steering wheel for a helm. <clears throat> and let's see, there's walkways all the way around. Uh, just be careful stepping on, on, on lines because you can trip over. These are lifelines. Feel free to grab onto them if you need. But uh, we can enter in down here through the cockpit. I usually take my shoes off here just because dirt only comes in one way and it's through the front door. And this is my home. This is uh, the inside of my sailboat. It, it's not the greatest, but it doesn't really have to be. It's uh, got standing room. We've got a uh, aft bedroom back there. We've got the nav station, which is where I do my work. We've got the two couches that turn into beds. We've got TVs, storage, the bedroom. The engine is actually down here underneath the stairs. We've got refrigerator. I just bought an air conditioner that I'm going to actually put right here. I'm going to put the air conditioner right inside of this entryway here. Um, it fits perfectly in there and all I got to do is put two little wedges and then put these little planks back and uh, Then I'll have air conditioner, which is great. I just bought this little thing. Um, it's $12 at Walmart um, It's not great, but it does exactly what I needed to do which is heat water and heat food um, And that's one of the things about doing this is I found that most of the stuff I've been buying and using has been stuff from the dollar store um, just the cheap kind of stuff is what I use the most. I have expensive gear. I have good stuff. I don't, I don't really use it as much. Simple little things like this little light switch coming in and out at, at night. It, it's huge. It makes a big difference for, for me, but uh, I like to use rechargeable everything. So you'll see Ry Ryobi stuff around, but um, I, um, I also do solar panels that I have some little solar panels that I charge my fans with and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. There's a bathroom to the left there. We call it, it's called a head, and um, I use my long boards for transportation locally. I've got a electric scooter in one of the lazarettes, and I've got um, my truck outside that I use for overlanding. So this is the they call it, it's called a galley. Um, Ninety nine cents or paper towel thing it works just fine. I use. I tend to use these pre-cooked rices and stuff because it's easiest to store. Um, it keeps it fresh. All you gotta do is heat it up. And I like to get things that are just add water. Another big thing because space is limited is this Magra pot set. It's a seating set that all the handles or all the pots fit into themselves. Um, and that makes a huge difference. That makes a huge difference in the amount of room I have in my cupboards here. All my spices and oils and everything goes up here. I try to steer away from glass as much as possible um, just because it tends to break or you know, and weighs a lot. So weight is also a, uh, an issue. This sailboat does have a a freezer box down here but we don't use it for that I actually just use my ice chest um, we got the sink just like normal I, I bring my water in for drinking but um, we can fill up I normally fill up the hose water out here and um, use it for like dishes and whatnot there's a refrigerator not much as far as food can fit in there but you can fit some um, I got hamburgers and stuff for grilling and almond milk um, things that don't go bad you know and I just make it for a week at a time and I'll go to the store and get more
as far as my working goes, you know, like I, I um, do my my work from the nav station. I'll usually sit right here and, and have my, my laptop up and um, I work remotely. So um, the, the marina has free Wi-Fi. So that kind of works out good. As far as storage goes, you'd be surprised as how much storage is in this thing. Um, it This is just, it just keeps going. Underneath here is um, the water tank. So when we fill up, it goes down there. Um, underneath there is the fuel tank for the engine. And then um, we got storage in the cupboards here. And um, this TV is just set up for antenna. So it just has regular free channels. And I have a TV back down underneath there um, that usually would be hooked up for like a video game or something. My ice chest is kind of a, you know, big deal as far as um, it becomes my, the table. It, 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 this also becomes the dry storage. And if I need to put freezer stuff in here on a long trip, I would put dry ice in this basket and put my meat down there and it will freeze solid. But the freezer has been kind of a huge deal. I use that a lot. I just got into kite surfing now that I have some free time and I plan on getting out and uh, doing some kite surfing. And if you want to look back here, you can see the bedroom with my other TV and um, it's called the forward V berth. There is storage in both of these. So, um, these are called foul weather. This is the foul weather gear lockers where I would keep my gear for rainy weather, cold weather. Um, the head we don't use much right now just because it's, um, we use the marina. Um, it's just easier that way. There is a pump out station over here that's free to use, but you just got to pull the boat over there, which we don't do. And um, so we just use the marina, but um, it's nice having this separate forward V berth from the rest of the boat because it, it gives you some sense of privacy back here or forward up here. I've got a PlayStation hooked up. So I, I play PlayStation, watch YouTube, Amazon, everything you normally would. Sure. So this is called, these are called settees. Um, they're, um, they're actually multifunctional. So like this one right here, when you pull out, you would, a person would be able to lay and put your feet through here to make it longer. You would also be able to tie off to this to be able to um, not roll out on, on rolly seas and conditions. There's storage behind all of these. I keep my snacks and whatnot down there. These little things right here, actually I use a lot at night. It doesn't need to be super bright in here. I, I like these things. Um, sometimes I'll put the citronella ones in there, um, but they, they work. They give you enough light to not have to use electricity which my, my electricity bill has been about two bucks a month, I think. Um, just because I, I, I don't have to use a lot of stuff. You know, I, you know, got a keel step mast, which is a mast that runs through the, the top deck down to the keel, give an extra support. So this thing is always here and present. But it's what makes us move forward so that's what's good about having a keel step mass it's safe i have been working towards this um this was not a spur of the moment thing this wasn't a, a financial choice it wasn't an economical choice it was a planned choice i had been wanting i'd been wanting to learn how to sail and live on a sailboat and travel for for since i since i was a teenager and um I uh, actually ended up joining the Navy and, and um, did a, spent a bunch of time out at sea and, and kind of felt like, yeah, okay, this is something I, c I can definitely do for you know, my free time. And so that's, that's kind of what I, I, I started planning towards and working towards. I've been living in a sailboat since Christmas of 2021. And I have been planning this for a long time though, to where like the transition was quite easy for me. Like I, I already kind of knew what to expect and what I needed. And some of the benefits are clearly the, the, the cost options. The, the, the price of the boat is the largest 
expenditure but after that um, maintenance is going to be your biggest expense um, other than that it's going to be just um, slip fees fuel costs and um, your electricity um, so yeah really the, the cost is is the best thing but for me it's been the ability to move about freely because now I have time to focus on my business I can come and go as I please I'm not tied down to my house um, the ability to come and go for me is probably the, the biggest yeah well when I first set out to become a digital nomad I you know would see these guys on their computers doing remote work from the beach and you know uh, I said I want to do that and so I did I, I bought me a MacBook and went to school and got a trade that I can do remotely and I found that it's only about a $250 round trip plane ticket to Oahu and back and so I just hop over there and come back. Some of the challenges I'm living on board a sailboat is definitely gonna be the size, the, 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 the limiting size. It makes you have to shop frugally. It makes you have to stop buying stuff. It makes you have to spend less money because you can't store it all. You don't need anything else. Um, once, once you have what you need, like most of it you don't even use on a regular basis, but you have to have on board. So um, that and the weather. Um, so like on a hot day, it can get really hot in here. You know, on, on, on a cold day, it can get really cold in here. So. You know, you have to be able to constantly be able to um, adjust to that. But um, I've been finding with basic household stuff like a, a air conditioner and a, and a little heater, um, you know, it does just fine. And, and it doesn't take a lot to heat or cool this place. And so I, I leave with my sets of luggage and um, a backpack. And when I come back, all my stuff is still here. And um, the freeing part is the biggest part the biggest aspect what I found through research YouTube channels uh, channels like bums on the boat or blue moon life or something they they talk about the cost of living on board um, in depth and they also talk about like the the ups and downs that the initial cost and stuff but what most channels and stuff people in, uh, don't they don't talk about is that you can find boats at all prices at all price ranges you can get a free boat on up to a hundred thousand dollar you know sailing yacht um it it's just a matter of what are you looking for somebody who, who's into travel somebody who's capable of dealing with having less somebody who's say maybe wanting to live work in the big city like san francisco but can't quite afford to live there um, this is, this puts you into the downtown, really, there, there was actually a free sailboat the other day, um, in downtown San Francisco, um, the slip fee was, I think, $400 a month. Um, you can't live anywhere in San Francisco for that price. So, um, maybe somebody who's looking for work or, you know, somebody looking to commute to a, a bigger city or even somebody who's just ready to stop spending and stop buying, you know, like if you just want to. You know, enjoy your day and not have to be a consumer or not have to, you know, you know, spend money just to be out there. You know, like you can be on a sailboat. I would say do some research and then just make it happen. Like, you know, go down to a marina is what I would say. Go down to a marina and talk to somebody. The sailors out here, the, the people that are around marinas, they love to talk and they'll give you all the information you'll ever need. Something I wish I had known before I had got into this would have been that... Bigger is not always better in the sailboats. Um, sometimes the bigger boats don't have the amenities you need. Um, for instance, some of the sailboats are race boats and they may be big as far as foot wise, but the inside may not have a kitchen or a galley. Um, it won't have a bathroom, it'll have a porta potty or something. Um, some of the smaller boats don't have a lot of this stuff that I take for granted on, a, on this size boat. For instance, like a, a bathroom with a door. Most small boats don't have that. So you really have to kind of realize what you have to deal with as far as amenities go when you buy the boat. Living in a marina has been interesting. Um, so they have a very strict 
three-day rule so it, it prevents people from living full-time at a marina um, you can register to get slips for full-time marina uh, living live aboard but um, they're very difficult to come by um, so the three days on and then you're supposed to leave for a day or however long and then you can come back for three days so that was kind of an adjustment period but not really for me because i travel i i go places it, well, it's not really a problem for me like i said in my truck you know i utilize it if i need to um because I, I do a lot of camping and go to hot springs and stuff so um you know it it, it serves its purpose for that um now as far as um the marina goes you know like i said i use the marina bathrooms i use the uh, marina washer and dryer um and other than that it, there's not really much that I, I you know other than you know the staff is super super nice super helpful um they have a lot of information to give and um yeah my hat's off to them they they do a lot of work around here i'm definitely thinking about setting this boat up to go offshore i don't know for sure if it's going to be this particular boat actually um i have my eye on another boat like that's the thing i once you get into it like you know what you think you might think you want once you get into it you might start to realize wait a minute this is this is nice but it's not exactly what i want and so i may i may in the future switch boats really. the minimalist lifestyle was i've always been part of that um kind of mentality i even in boot camp like it was easy for me um folding my clothes keeping everything nice and tidy that's that's just what you do in a small space um and you know living on board the, the ship you know in the navy it um, really teaches you how to keep your stuff small and tidy and clean and and you know you, you, it just makes life easier um when, when when you know where everything is and it's you know everything has its place and um, also the 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 not having all the extra stuff you know like that when i moved out of my house i I, I could not believe all the stuff I had, how heavy it was and like how freeing it was to lock that storage shed up and be like, I don't have to come back to that for a long time and, and know that it's fine. It's there. It's safe. It's, you know, and now, now, like I said, I use my backpacks for, you know, most of everything I use now. So, um, yeah, the minimal, minimalist lifestyle is a huge part of it. I think the Navy prepared me in many ways. Uh, you know, they, they. They teach you how to first first off live on a ship live on live on board live out to sea um but also you know they, they teach you how to um you know keep your area to to work each station um they teach, teach taught me how to speak the language like we don't call that the office it's called the nav station uh, we don't call it the front of the boat we call it forward you know it's just the the um, port and starboard things you know we i, I have that now instilled in me to where um, you know, it, I can, I can talk with the other sailors out here and, and we understand each other. And that's a universal language actually that, that goes, you know, across the planet, you know, everybody knows port and starboard. Um, and that's what I find it, you know, very, um, intriguing about, you know, the language of sailing. So my son, he's a teenager and, um, he lived with me, and, but now he's staying with his mom and, um, in Stockton, which is not bad. You know, that she's, we have a great relationship. She's great you know he's great everybody's happy he just he comes and visit he was here the other day you know and stays for a week or so but you know it's it's not for it you just can't have an address this is what i should say you can't have a legitimate address on a sailboat like this that i know of yet and so in order to do that he, he has to go to his mom's to go to school so that was unfortunate my personal philosophy on life i i believe in and helping as many people as possible throughout my time of consciousness um, i try to live the search and rescue swimmer motto of, you know, so others may live um, i try to save as many people as possible any way i possibly can i uh, it's just a part of who i am i try to help people um, and i hope that somehow this can help somebody who may be struggling or you know have, having a difficult time trying to find you know affordable living maybe this can help them in some way getting where i am today 
didn't happen by myself. Um, it didn't happen alone. I had help. Um, you know, the, 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 the family support is huge. I mean, couldn't have done it without my family. Um, and I will say there are certain things, you know, that, that are a little different as far as me being a veteran goes. I, I had things like the Montgomery GI Bill that allowed me to go to school um, and, and paid for my school, you know, which was a, a huge advantage. Um, and, it, and it helped me learn a new career and helped me move, move on to a new lifestyle. So I, I will say, you know, thanks to the GI Bill, it helped me out a lot. Was your family uh, accepting of this sort of lifestyle? Everybody thought I was crazy. Everybody still just like, why, what, what are you? But then I start showing them my bills and I show them, you know, the smile on my face and I show them, you know, like, um, you know, my happiness, my eagerness to, to wake up in the morning and go places and do things. Um, you know, it, it, it's changed me fundamentally to the core. I, I am a, just a completely different person than I was. I'm a, I'm a happier, free person now. For years that happened. I'm like for years, they're like, "Why do you want to live on a sailboat? No, no sailboats. This is that's crazy talk." You know, it, it, it ultimately it wasn't until after the my divorce that I I decided, okay, well, this is what I've always wanted. It's time for me to do this now. And so I did. Um, I already kind of like I said had it planned. I already knew what to do, how to do it. I just had to execute. Um, I scoured the internet looking for boats. Um, I found this one. Uh, it fit all my criteria that I needed and I did it. I just went out on a limb and bought it and there's no way faster to get out there than to get out there. So that's what I did. You know, I talk about like being a consumer and stuff and, and just my, you know, the lifestyle I lived prior to this was, it, it, it was what we're all kind of accustomed to, you know, you, you leave the house, you go to Walmart, you go shopping, you, you eat out, you do all that kind of stuff, spend all that kind of money and you come back home and you, know, you go to work and repeat. That grind to me just wore away at who I was. It changed me to who society wanted me to be. And that wasn't necessarily what was best for me. Um, you know, I, after the military and, and you know, my um, dealings with the VA and all that, um, you know, I, I had to really ask myself what was it that I wanted to do with my time and and this was it, you know, this, I, I wanted to, I don't, I don't want to sit in one place anymore, I don't want to just sit there, I want to be able to move about and if, I, if something comes up I, and, and an opportunity or, um, you know, something that allows me to go somewhere different, I'm, I take it and I go. And, my house doesn't stop me anymore. You can find me at creativedigitizedsolutions.com. Um, I have a YouTube channel on there. You can find all the links to my social media as well. Um, and if anybody, like I said, needs any help getting into this kind of lifestyle, I'd be more than willing to answer some questions and point them in the right direction. Um, like I said, boats can be bought from free on up. So uh, the only thing stopping you is you. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.